is economic justice. There is no economic justice for the baby because the baby's dead, right? I wouldn't refer. I, I, I don't really know how to answer your question. I would, you know, I would refer was to Was the baby fetus. dead or alive? I'm ref we're referring to a fetus. Okay. Is the fetus dead or alive after an abortion? The fetus would be dead after okay. an abortion. Right. Do you, if, the, if the mother is healthy and the baby is healthy, do, do you support abortion up to the moment of birth? So I, you know, I think that's, that's a really hard question to answer because that just doesn't happen. You're asking me about something that simply doesn't happen. Well, it's I think, legal. I, it's, I will tell it's you legal, that, It's legal in uh, Vermont, New Jersey, Oregon, Colorado, New Mexico, Alaska, and the District of Columbia. And, and uh, the loon wing of the Democratic Party supports abortion up to the moment of birth. So do you support that or, or oppose it? I don't think, let me say, I'm here to talk about the economics of abortion. No, you're here as an expert. And I'm I, as, you I think what you're you asking believe. a question as a person, which I'll answer as a person. Okay, tell me as a person. Um, I, I will tell you as a person that I have ambivalence about abortion. I will tell you as a person, I haven't personally had an abortion. And I will also tell you as a person looking at the evidence around me and understanding how complex the decisions are that people face. Okay. I'm just simply uncomfortable I gotta move on, thinking that there's a simple I don't think, I don't answer think that applies answer to my everyone. Question. I trust um, women and their health care providers. Yeah, it's real simple. You either support abortion for a healthy mother and baby up to the moment of birth or you don't. And I, I don't think it's a difficult question. H how about you, doctor? Do you support if the mother is healthy and the baby's healthy, do you support abortion up to the moment of birth? So, Senator, you're using really inflammatory language to talk about a medical procedure, and it's not a simple yes or no. Not to mention when you make statements like that, you're erasing the grief right. and the trauma you're, that my patient. You're not going to answer my through. question either, are you? It's not a question that can I think be I, answered I think in I know an appropriate way. I think, I think I know your answer. Um, Mrs. Ford, okay, let's take a baby at 21 weeks. Hold up, my. This is a baby at 21 weeks, okay? Um, the baby can feel pain, right? Yes. And the baby's pretty developed, right? Yes. And do you know the name of the procedure that the doctor would use to abort that baby at 21 weeks? I'm not a doctor, but I believe it's a DNR. It's called dilation and evacuation. And then the doctor would take what's called, a, they, the doctor would call it a sofa clamp. It's really a pair of pliers with sharp teeth on the end. And without giving the baby any pain medication and start tearing the baby apart, is that right? As far as I understand the procedure. Yeah, and she might start with the legs and pull them out and the arms and pull them out, right? And then she might go for the for the heart or the spine and just pull the baby out piece by piece. Is that right? Without giving the baby pain medication. That's what I understand the procedure to be. Okay. So then the doctor would go in and, and, and use those pliers to crush the baby's head. Is that right? Yes. Uh, as far as I'm and then she'd pull the head out, the crushed skull out. So what you saw there was abortion advocates having to do what every abortion advocate must do in order to justify abortion, and that's dehumanizing the baby. You see, essentially, their point of view is that the baby they prefer to call it a fetus, and even though that actually makes no difference, and the word fetus is Latin for baby, I think what they're getting at is that the baby is just not as developed as a full grown human therefore that that fetus has a has, doesn't have the same worth and if we need to sacrifice the fetus's rights for the sake of the mother's rights well then it's justified because they are not fully human and you can see this idea comes from a naturalistic secular humanist worldview the idea that we evolve and become human over gradual gradual processes but the problem with that is that babies in the womb are just as human as us they are just in a different location and at a different age of their growth. 
but they have all of the seven characteristics of a living being. They move, they respire, that's to breathe. They're sensitive, they feel pain. That's why it was rightly highlighted that during the abortion procedure, they feel it, it hurts. They grow, they have reproductive organs, even in the womb that develop. They excrete, so that means they poo, and they require nutrition. These are things that living things need. And so they are just as alive as you and I. The only difference is their age and their location. That's why the question was rightly posed. Do you support abortion up until birth? Because the only difference between a child that is, let's say, 33 weeks in the womb and a child that's born prematurely at 33 weeks is location. And she might try and obfuscate the question and say, you know, this doesn't really happen. But the fact of the matter is there are states where this is legal. There are people who are pushing for that to become more and more and more the case. And in order to do that, they have to dehumanize the life of the baby 